Uh, will you plant, let's see, this one's from Lynn. Will you plant some fruit trees in the new areas, especially in the areas so damaged by the forest fires? Well, she's referring to my Bigfoot Garden of Eden projects that I started uh, many years back, where I started taking care of the uh, natural food sources in the area. Uh, there's some old abandoned, abandoned apple orchards and, and some old homesteads uh, that have been producing apples and so forth. And I go up there and I prune the trees and fertilize them and, and stuff like that. I take care of the blackberry bushes and fertilize them so that uh, they'll put on heavier. I, uh, you know, take care of the wild grapevines and so forth and try to get them to run up the trees and so forth to where they'll have more grapes on them. Uh, just things like that. Um, so I started planting trees. Um, I have found that just throwing out apple seeds doesn't work very well. All your little munchers out there love to eat the little seedlings. So basically this starts from apple seeds. Pretty well get munched as you toss them out. So, or as they start to grow. Uh, so, I need to be able to plant seedlings that have a chance of survival, which means probably at least a year old. Um, now, this last year, I harvested about 500 apples from the area up there. Okay, I want to make sure that people know that I didn't bring in an invasive species or anything like that. These are trees that have been there for hundreds of years, or I should say at least a hundred years. So they're basically local or natural. Uh, they were introduced a long time ago. So I'm not introducing anything new. Um, I harvested about 500 apples and I started about 20 seedlings as an experiment to see how well they do. Uh, out of those 20 seedlings, I lost about 10 of them due to birds and the Arizona heat. I've got about 10 that I'm going to plant next year in the spring. So what this has taught me is if I'm going to plant more apple trees and, and so forth in these burned out areas, which the Forest Service is no longer replanting, um, I will need to scale up my operations. Next year I'll plant more seeds, I'll start more seedlings, and then I'll have more trees to start in some of these devastated areas. Okay, Deanne. Deanne has some very good questions, some of which are going to take an entire video to discuss them. Um, I think I will spread out some of her questions over the next few question and answer sessions, if that's okay. Because, uh, you know, some of them get pretty in-depth. Uh, one of them, one of her first questions is, what do you think of, of the Ketchum DNA results? This is a real, um, it split the Bigfoot community pretty much in half. Some people accept it, some don't. Um, some don't like to give up their theories. And... Um, and some welcomed it. So, uh, as for me, I am a scientific person in nature. Um, you know, I am a kind of a data geek and a little, a little bit of a data geek, an old data geek. But um, when the results came out, it really didn't surprise me. In fact, it helped explain some of the traits and behaviors that I had been noticing in the field. Uh, I will say that the science is solid. It is the verbiage of the interpretation of the science that might be flawed or opinionated. Uh, because, you know, if you look into the study, you'll find out that there were 16 labs and universities that participated in the testing, some of which did double-blind testing. And that was to ensure that 
the data was correct, okay, and that it wasn't falsified. 109 high probability samples matched, which allowed sequencing of three complete genomes. Okay, that conclusion is that out of those 109 samples, there is some unknown primate out there wandering the U.S. and Canada. Now, okay, we're not going to say it's Bigfoot, but there's a primate out there wandering around in the forest, okay? The three complete genomes allowed them um, to do a little bit of study on the mitochondrial and nuclear DNA. The mitochondrial DNA turns out that the it was a female homo sapien that started the race. Ooh, boy. <laughs> and the nuclear DNA was some kind of unknown hominin. Okay. A hominin is kind of like Neanderthal, kind of like man, uh, but not Neanderthal because they have Neanderthal DNA, so it's a known hominin. Uh, but this, whatever started Bigfoot's an unknown hominin. Very many uh, unassociated DNA tests before uh, the Ketchum study were coming up with human contamination. And it's kind of hard to believe that most of those human contaminations were handled incorrectly uh, that allowed the uh, DNA on the mitochondrial side to come up positive as being human. So. You know, it kind of answers a few questions there. Um, <clears throat> now, it, it also, that, the deal where previous DNA testing <coughs> showed that uh, there was human contamination, it kind of makes you start to wonder um, whether or not the peer pressure for the different labs and so forth um, played a part. Would they say that it's just human contamination rather than tell you that the mitochondrial side was homo sapien? Um, there's a lot of peer pressure and a lot of credibility online when you start saying Bigfoot or Sasquatch or human hybrid or something like that. So, yep, we're back to the old flat world concept. Uh, will they accept it or will they not? Okay. Um, you have to ask yourself about the hundreds of private DNA tests and results. How many came back inconclusive, contaminated, or unknown? Um, and this would probably make a very good book as far as the Bigfoot community would go. So this would be a real good project for somebody to take up. Me? No, I don't have time to do that. I'm too busy being in the field and doing my own research. Um, you know, I would be more than willing to review it, uh, maybe get some ideas or whatever, but no, I'm not going to write the book. Okay. This about concludes the, the question and answer period for this first time. I hope this comes across as being informational. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to see how many fiery darts and burning arrows get tossed at me when I post this. But that's okay because I'm out there in the field and at least I'm doing and at least I'm working to see what's going on. So until next week, we'll See you later. Bye.